Welcome back everyone to theCUBE's live coverage here at SAS Innovate 2024. I'm John Furrier, your host of theCUBE, with my co-founder and co-host Dave Vellante, extracting the signal from the noise, reporting on all the top stories. Go to siliconangle.com, check out all the stories. Of course, theCUBE.net for the, all the videos. As we're in day two of two days of coverage. We've got Jared Peterson, Senior VP of R&D, Platform Engineering at SAS. He was on stage where he did the demo and the announcement of the general availability of SAS via Workbench. Um, Welcome to the, back to the Cube. No, happy to be here. And I, <laughs> I mean, I, I, you'd be hard pressed to find something I'm more excited to talk about than via Workbench, so. You know, one of the things I love about the, 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 the product and just where it's going is it's really kind of teed up perfectly for both the AI wave yep. and developer That's uh, right. needs. If you look at the market, and we report this on SiliconANGLE and cover it on the Cube with, with other experts, the rise of open source yep. in the AI world on the model side is merging and almost connecting with the proprietary models from size and functionality. Right. And also the requirements to run them are getting easier. You're seeing yeah. some models running on an iPhone. Sure. So sure. we just talked to Intel about cost of ownership. So the developer community is booming. That's right, yeah. So having a workbench yeah. is a pretty no, big I deal. Mean, yeah, Workbench, uh, you talk about the developer community and the rise of open source, and, and you can really see Workbench as us kind of trying to reach back uh, to, to, with our kind of le deep legacy in kind of these areas, but then kind of bring some of that forward and say, okay, can we bring uh, a tool to the market that blends both the, the world of SaaS, SaaS programming, but also if you want to just do pure open source or you want to use open source languages like Python, but use SaaS underneath the covers. Workbench just kind of brings this all together in this kind of amazing package. And, and I think, I mean, we're really proud of it uh, yeah. just because of so many, the, all the things it's able to What's cover. the big highlights? What's the big takeaway? People watching yeah. right now, they're SaaS customers sure. or a prospect. First of all, the analytics product's well known and, and yeah. it's been dec decades of success. What's the big deal? What's the high order bit of the news? Yeah, so I mean, I would, I would go through a couple things. First, I think about just uh, Workbench is this kind of cloud native, cloud scalable, rapidly accessible development environment. Um, and then, so once you have a development environment open, it brings kind of the best of breed uh, tools from kind of the open source community to your kind of uh, palette, so to speak. So you've got Visual Studio Code, if you want to go that, that angle. You've got Jupyter Lab, if you want to go that angle. Uh, and so we're bringing those kind of IDEs to the, to the table. So cloud scalable, cloud native, got these IDEs, but then we're, we're bringing kind of SaaS analytics into the, all of that. So if you're a SaaS coder, the SaaS language works beautifully in both of those editors. Uh, if you're a pure open source developer, Python is there underneath the covers, ready to go right when you start up. You can use it in both of those, uh, both of those editors as well. But then if you want to say, okay, I'm interested in the SaaS analytics, this kind of the, the reliable analytics that SaaS has been known for for years, but I want that in Python. We've now got native Python libraries that are also there in Workbench. And then the last thing I would say uh, for the SaaS coder is, in Workbench, we've taken all of, these, uh, all of these analytical investments we've made in the last few years in VIA that are in our, what we call our CAS server, uh, via what we call actions. Things like you know, advanced uh, computer vision algorithms, uh, advanced natural language processing, neural networks, those kind of things, deep learning. And now all of that's being exposed as uh, in the form of procs, and procs are kind of the unit of value in the SaaS language, so the, all that right. new capability that's been in VIA is now in uh, the SaaS language, uh, so a SaaS 9 coder can kind of come into uh, Workbench, they know the SaaS language, they get all this new goodness, and it's all there in this, this environment that's just lightning fast and starts up so and there. So Workbench fills a nice hole in the portfolio, Absolutely. and uh, I'm interested in how it can be used as a lever to add incremental value to the roadmap, so what can we expect now that that, that hole is filled, yeah. and what kind of flywheel effect can you get in the roadmap? Yeah, yeah, so when we look at the roadmap, and we, you see us doing some things in, in Workbench that are absolutely kind of hints as the things that are coming in the future. And so, right. uh, one of the things that we like to think about in Workbench is it's like this leanest, meanest rendering of the VIA platform as possible. So we've taken out anything and everything that you don't actually absolutely need for this kind of pure developer persona, this pure kind of SaaS and Python coder, and, and so we've just kind of leaned it out. And so you'll see us do more of that if, as we kind of have brought people to Workbench, they're then going to expect that kind of experience of, man, this thing starts up fast, it's, it's blazing fast when I'm executing code. So 
the, the, the way we got that experience is because we leaned all those things out. So now let's say, okay, maybe they want some visualization capabilities on top of that. Maybe they want model management on top of that. Well, we've got to make sure that we also render those things out in the same way we've done Workbench so that you get all that the same, kind of it starts up in seconds, it runs super fast. Um, and so, yeah, it is that bridge. It's kind of like, okay, let's bring you in, let's, let's get you, you know, connected to all these things, all this goodness, and then let's bring the rest of IA to the table. And you got to keep it lightweight though. That's right. right? Yeah, okay, yeah. So, well, so architecturally, well, how do you do that? Well, the way you do that is you only start up, you only bring uh, to the table uh, and, and kind of from a compute and resource perspective, the things that the user absolutely wants, the mm -hmm. things that they're demanding. The thi things aren't just running all the time in the background, and so maybe they start with code, kind of the pure workbench experience now, and maybe they're using code for ETL, they're getting data in, they're transforming that data via SAS or Python. But then at some point, maybe they're ready to do some exploratory analysis of that data. And so at that point, in the future, it's like, okay, as soon as I have that thought, I want to do this, that's when it's like, okay, let's now just go spin up the, the, the containers behind the scenes that are necessary for that experience and only that experience so that they get, then get that same you know, snappiness and performance. Yeah, yeah. What are some of the customer uh, early adopters saying about the product? Obviously, I mean, I was really, I like the UI, you guys nailed that, yeah. great job on that. I mean, it looked easy to use, I mean, I was, I haven't used it, but I, in the demos you, yeah. you guys gave, I was like blown away by that. Yeah. So user interface check, I'm assuming soon they like it. Yeah, no. What, what, what's some of the other feedback? Well, so I, on the people like it uh, question, uh, the first thing to note is it's, it <laughs> happens over and over again, both internally at SaaS, but then externally as we interface with customers. The first time people, people interact with Workbench, before we even get to feature function, they just smile. Like yeah. it's just this like delightful experience, and and so that's I mean, as a developer inside of an R and D organization, that's always just fun. And, and you know you've got something when when you just see this kind of joy, kind of you know, wash over people. But then beyond that, the thing that we we hear people tell us is you see this light bulb come on of wait a second, okay, in the same platform, I can enable SaaS code development. I can enable pure open source development. I can enable open source languages using SAS math, and in the future, other additional languages like R. When, when they see that they can do that, all that in one tool, that's when they're like, oh, wow, okay, this is, this is different. And so that's the biggest thing we hear, is people realizing I can, they can kind of bring all that underneath one offering. Uh, and, and so when that light bulb comes on, people get really And you've said R is coming, yes? Yes, okay. absolutely, yeah, right. later this year, okay. yep. Okay. You know, one of the things um, we, we see is, you guys always had been talking about democratization. Right. Now that you, you have a real developer product. Right. And so I was intrigued by the slide that said, tool for the data science developer. The data word data science developer. Now, in this world of generation, the, the, the population needed for data scientists doesn't need to be big. That's right, it's, yeah. I won't say shrinking, but it, you don't need to have these alpha nerd, geeky data <laughs> scientists jamming right. all the time as a, yeah. as a table stakes. Yeah. You can hire one or even use a managed service. Now you have the, the more of the user base coming on, so you have, sure. which opens up to the developer. Yeah. Classic app developer. Right, right. Yeah, no, exactly. And so it, Generative AI in coming into tools like Workbench, whether it's through kind of co-pilots and code assistants and those kind of things, is going to enable um, people maybe coming from more of just a developer background to then dabble in data mm -hmm. science, right? You know, I mean, and so that's one way to go. And it'll, it'll be interesting to see how generative AI kind of across the board allows developers, data scientists, to level up in kind of whatever dimension they're interested in. Yeah, Jared, one of the things that came up in our analyst roundtable this morning, this afternoon was, the recognition that the old days, oh, the, the tech genius builds an algorithm, the company right. goes public, they, they, they have core technology. Yeah. Okay, new technology is ubiquitous. It's now the glue yeah. that holds yeah. things together, and everything around is, is the new IP, and of course, we've been saying in theCUBE, workflows and data is the new intellectual property, yeah. which is tied yeah, yeah. into your theme. Right. But now, when you start opening up the democratization to developers to code with Workbench, yeah. the rock star, the superstar, the person, could be a business user. Absolutely. So it's like the, the now it's shifting to not getting a little anything for the team award or a little pat on the back or a little yeah. maybe a bump in promotion or raise. Someone in the organization could be a game changer on the business model for the company. Oh, no, for sure. This is a huge power dynamic. Absolutely, so I, you know, one of the things I like to remind people of internally at SaaS is, whether it's with tools like Workbench or just kind of what you're seeing happen across the space with generative AI, is that, so yeah, 
doesn't have to be a developer, it might be a business user, but I like to remind people, in the future, there will, we will be competing with companies we don't even know exist today <laughs> because these tools are, uh, uh, enable this wave of productivity that we've just never seen and never imagined. And so teams of one, teams of two, teams of three are going to be able to, to do things that we, we would have never thought possible years ago. Yeah. yeah, and I like the intelligence being built into Vi, that's another one I like. Another announcement that I, I first of all, you have the, the models yeah. You're selling lightweight models, that's a home run, by the way. I Thank think you. that's going to yeah. be a standard. We're excited about it. The prompt saving concept yeah. is interesting because that kind of is a nuanced point, but it brings out the directional direction of saving stuff yeah. and using yeah. it later. That's right. And promptless potentially around the corner. Sure. A promptless sure. environment. Well, hey, yeah. it just does it for me. Right, right. Yeah, no, um, we're really, so we're really excited about the prompt catalog work. And, and one of the reasons we're so excited about it is it allows us to kind of blend both, okay, new generative AI, which of course is dependent on prompts. Uh, that's kind of the way you interact with that, that system, right? But a prompt catalog allows you to bring what you might consider to be more traditional NLP ta task and technologies into the fold that are still amazingly effective, uh, but they, they're now being used in new ways you would have never imagined before generative a AI came on the scenes to, to make that better, yeah. right? And so, uh, and there are very few companies that can kind of blend all those things together like we yeah. can just because Via has all this stuff yeah. kind of in the being, toolbox. Being able to persist them and then reuse them, yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's huge. I mean, yeah. uh, that's, I mean, we all need that. You know, <laughs> it's funny, Dave, we, we watch, we've always talked about this on theCUBE um, over the past decade. You know, when I broke into the business uh, in the A's, I had a computer science degree, uh, it, the career was called software engineering. Yeah, yeah. Engineering was in the word. Then That's it became right. software developer. Yeah. Then it became coder. Yeah. Uh, then, then all kinds of other stuff started happening. just keep happening. chunking like, words. Like, yeah. like the personas start exploding. Well, good, the aperture gets bigger. But we're kind of coming back to, to software engineering. Yeah. But you don't have to be a software engineer to do it. You, you're engineering the system. So you guys sure. have to think about, and this is what I want to get your reaction of, how to enable that to be better for the user now the engineer, the business users now, yeah. engineering systems, they're putting stuff together. That's right. And so you have to be smart about knowing what they might want to need without yeah. being a coder. I think that's the trick. Can you share your, your vision on how that evolves? Yeah. I see, I see this happening with this product. No, for sure. So, I mean, first of all, where I'd start is, I like to remind people, I, I talk to customers about this all the time, it's kind of this question of like, what do you want to be when you grow up, right? You know, and, and most of our customers, they don't necessarily wake up every day wanting to be a professional software development organization, right? They're, they're in financial services or health and life sciences or manufacturing, right? And so SaaS, we have to take that on, right? We, we've got to be, bring the professional software development, software engineering, architecture, and those kind of things to bear. And so what we've got to make sure is, as we bring think, tools like Workbench into the Viya ecosystem, as we continue to buy, the, evolve the Viya ecosystem, that we're providing kind of the world-class architecture for things like, how do you do generative AI at scale, right? How do you bring things like a prompt catalog into a workflow to make the generative AI experience better? And, and I, I mean, the, I, I feel like, we, you know, take a lot of pride in the fact that like we we can do that because yeah. of you know SaaS kind of being around. And, 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 and how do you have. customize it for my specific use case, for my industry, yeah. you know, all the stuff that we've been talking about for yeah. Yeah. months and I mean, over a year now. You know, it's, I brought up this line of questioning because your title's Platform engineering. Yeah. Right. Now that word is used a lot in cloud native. Rob Stretch, right. our lead analyst uh, in this area, he's, who's here, we were talking to some of your folks about this. Yeah. That platform engineering in the quote cloud native Kubernetes serverless container world is very important. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. However, it it's not that it's not trivial. No. So the skills gap comes in. So I want to get your thoughts on how Via and now AI could elevate, I won't say, le let's just say level one engineer or IT person, level three super platform engineering. Sure, it's sure. hard to get that training or find people to do that, but right. we're seeing AI turn level one talent yeah. into level three talent ac right, across right. the board from yeah. DevSecOps all the way over to business analytics. Yeah. No, for sure. So, yeah, we when we see that internally, right? As we're, even as we're adopting generative AI tools in our software development process. So, so yes, absolutely. It, especially in areas where, whether it's in you know software development, in DevSecOps, anything where you've got some amount of boilerplate code and those kind of things that, that are part of the process, generative AI is excellent as far as injecting into that and kind of leveling up. And so from the platform engineering perspective, it's our job at the SaaS side to make sure we're, we're bringing the kind of services, the tools, the kind of uh, capabilities inside of Via that help people access those things. Now, I got to tell you, and I'll, I'll make, well, it's not a confession, it's more of an observation. So when I saw the <laughs> demo uh, and, and the presentation, I kind of had a throwback to like 2008. 
where okay. I first used AWS. Yeah. When yeah. I first used AWS, I was working on a startup idea, didn't want to buy servers. Right. Um, that would have cost me about 10,000 and then some yeah. stuff, all that stuff, and that's a host. The interface, there was no custom domain support at that time. <laughs> yeah, the yeah, URL, yeah. Was easy, there was an EC2 right. URL. <laughs> right, right, right. Matt Garman <laughs> laughed because when I was talking to him about it, you remember those days? Like, yeah, I had yeah. to go to RightScale to do that. Anyway. This old, but you guys have that all in one package. Right. I can spin up resources. Yeah. There's no friction. No, exactly. And, and I'm imagining that you guys must be thinking about the enablement there, knowing your customer base, knowing what that's going to do. Yeah. It's going to have that Amazon web service effect where the first time you use it, well, the alternative was provision, grunt yes. work. That's right. All this Deploy, heavy lifting. install, all of that. Yeah. So you got this dynamic going on. Yep. What, what are you seeing as proof points? As, is it going that way, one? because um, it seems like it is, I'm sure yeah. you agree, but yeah. if it is, what's, what, what are you seeing that's validating that, and how do you see it evolving for your customers, because you're, you know more about your customers yeah. than I do, I imagine it'd be huge. Yeah. yeah, no, I mean, I think, so frictionless is a great phrase, uh, and, you know, as we talk to our customers that are trying, they, they want to be doing modern data science, right? They want to access, you know, whether it's generative AI or just kind of, you know, modern algorithmic techniques, but the, the barriers that's in the way is whether they're even open source, whether they're SaaS, it's like, how do I provision, how do I deploy, how do I configure, how do I tune, how do I monitor, all of those things. In, in the cloud, you've got to have all those skills in-house if you want to do all of those mm -hmm. things, kind of step, walk those steps. And so Workbench is like, hey, let's just, clear all that noise, right? Yeah. Get, get out of the way, yeah. um, and, and if you're a developer, you know, you don't need an IT shop setting this stuff up behind you. Like, just, yeah. you know, log in, click a button, it's yeah. there, start coding, run, you're good. And you can just turn up and start playing with data. Yeah. I mean, there's no, I mean, and then that's where the discovery comes in. What I'd be curious to see is, and again, just me riffing in real time here on this, is that because it's self-service, what accidental by on purpose things happen. <laughs> like like <laughs> sure. what like okay I'm gonna play around. Oh my god discovery because we're seeing yeah. with Genevieve AI that if you do a good prompt you get to a quick um, idea or right. value faster right. Right. that then another prompt can follow so you're in a time series of discovery. That's right, yeah. You, this, the innovation cycle just kind of keeps turning. Yeah, I mean, well I, you guys know this, but like from a software development perspective, when you when you're building a product when you give somebody a tool and that type of thing happens on the other side of it, there's nothing more rewarding, right, yeah. than just seeing like, oh man, okay, we gave them this thing, quick startup, generative AI, it's all those tools are in the box and now they're just cycling and cycling yeah. Yeah. and cycling. It's like, oh, I never thought that would happen. You know. uh, Proud Papa. Yeah, <laughs> exactly, yeah. All right, so bottom line, what's the bumper sticker for the product benefits the customers, people watching, via Workbench, it's an on-demand self-service compute, self-service yeah. on-demand compute for architecture, our product that you can explore data quickly. Yeah. I think I summed it up okay. Yeah, um, you did a pretty good job. What yeah. is <laughs> what is the <laughs> bottom line value proposition to the customer? Yeah, quick access to a cloud-native, cloud-scalable development environment using modern IDEs, VS Code, Jupyter Lab. SaaS code is there if that's what you want. Uh, pure open source is in the box if that's what you want. If you want to blend those worlds, you can do that too, and we'll just keep adding things like R and other goodness into the box and in the future. what is the benefit and the impact of the customer? Rapid access to actually doing real data science, delivering value in their organizations, getting from questions to answers rapidly. Sure, thanks for coming on theCUBE, really appreciate yeah. you. Happy Congratulations, a great product. Thank you very much. We have, it's going to be big, I, I predict, it's pretty obvious to predict yeah. that. Hope so. Thanks for coming on. Yeah. Okay, real I'm value. John Furrier with okay. Dave Vellante, you're watching theCUBE. We'll be right back, day two, we're on day two of Walter Walk Day, two days of coverage. We'll be right back, thanks for watching.